Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we will learn about the solid state drives or SSDs. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now, in the lecture series of secondary memories, we first observed the various removable auxiliary storages. Now, coming to fixed auxiliary storages, in the last few sessions, we have observed the theoretical aspects of hard disk drives. And thereafter, we solved quite a few numerical problems till the last session. In this session, we will observe the last type of fixed secondary storages, that is, the solid state drives. Now, solid state drives or SSDs are available in two different form factors the 2.5 inch form factor and the M.2 form factor. Now, unlike the hard disk drives, SSDs do not have any moving parts and therefore, these are very quiet and more efficient in terms of power consumption. Now, among these, the 2.5 inch form factor SSDs were introduced at first. So, maintaining the chronology, we are going to learn about them at first. Now, just like the hard disk drives, the 2.5 inch SSDs are also interfaced with the motherboard using the SATA or serial advanced technology attachment cables through their SATA modules. Nonetheless, 2.5 inch SSDs use SATA 3.0 interface. Due to this, the data transfer rate for the SSDs can reach up to 600 megabytes per second. Whereas, the hard disk drives of 7200 RPM, the one that are more popular among the desktop workstations, can achieve only up to 80 to 160 megabytes per second. Let's now get into the internal architecture of the 2.5 inch SSDs. So, these are the top and the bottom covers. Now, in between these, there is a logic board. Here, at the top of it, we can observe two rows of interface connectors. In this portion, we plug in the SATA cable, and this is where the power supply is connected. Now, SSDs have the built in cache chip on their logic board. And they also have the controller chip that controls the operations within the SSDs. Now, these are the NAND memory chips and they reside on both the sides of the logic board. So, for data storage, SSDs basically use flash memory chips. Now, these NAND memory chips within the SSDs are called CTF memory or charge trap flash memory. Basically, in each cell, we can store information by placing different levels of electrons. In earlier days, we could only store either 1 or 0, that is a single bit, within a memory cell, where if the cell was filled with electron, it would represent 0. On the other hand, the memory cell with no or few electron would represent 1. This is why they used to be called single level cells. Nowadays, we have triple level cells. The presence of the electrons in a cell can mean any value from binary 000 to 111. In simpler terms, now every SSD memory cell can store at least 3 bits. Additionally, the memory cells are stacked vertically over one another and they are made up of NAND flash memories. This is why the technology is also termed as VNAND. Due to this, the SSDs are very fast in terms of data transfer. However, SSDs are expensive as well. Due to this reason, nowadays, the desktop workstations provide us with wide variety of storage options. The frequently used data, like the operating systems, can be loaded into the SSDs and the infrequently used data like videos, images, audio files can be stored in the hard disk drives to achieve efficiency. So, this is all about the 2.5 inch SSDs. Let's now move on to the next type of solid state drives. Now, this type of SSDs are very small in size and they are interfaced with the motherboard using the M.2 slot. So, these use M.2 interface. 
Now, n.2 form factor was originally named as NGFF or next generation form factor. Now, observe on the SSD sticks label, the term NVMe is written. It is called non volatile memory express. It is a communication protocol which has specifically been developed for SSDs. This reduces the CPU overhead and due to this, the simultaneous input operations can be performed on the SSDs. NVMe is basically an optimization protocol. Actually, in recent years, due to the advancement of technology, SSDs have become way faster and to achieve its true potential having the new form factor that is the M.2 and the optimized NVMe protocol was a dire need. NVMe M.2 SSDs are interfaced using the PCIe or Peripheral Component Interconnect Express Bus. PCIe is the same connector which is used to connect high-performance graphics card directly to the motherboard. When NVMe M.2 SSDs use PCIe connectors, they deliver the fastest possible data processing and transfer speed. Generally, the data transfer rate may reach 2600 megabytes per second to 3 gigabytes per second. That is, the 5 times more speed than the 2.5 inch SSDs. Now, if the computer's motherboard doesn't have an M.2 connector, then alternatively, a PCIe card with an M.2 connector can be used to connect the NVMe M.2 SSD to the motherboard. Unlike the 2.5 inch SSDs, NVMe M.2 SSDs require no power cable. However, they are highly expensive. By the way, there are some other M.2 SSDs available out there which are not NVMe SSDs. On the contrary, they are just simple SATA SSDs with M.2 interface. Those have the similar data transfer rate of 2.5 inch SSDs. So this is all about the solid state drives. All right, people, that will be all for this session. I hope the concepts of solid state drives are now clear to you. With this, we have come to the end of our second chapter, Memory Interfacing and Hierarchy. I hope the journey was fruitful to you. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.